So hi guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. Today we're going to be looking at the latest announcement from our arcade uh, Blaze on the 14th of July, which is a new collection coming in early 2022. Pre-orders in November, um, and it's the Evercade Renovation Products Collection 1. And I'm going to um, have a look at all the games and I'm actually going to play the games and let you know what I think of them. So let's get started. Okay, Evercade Blaze announced this collection just a couple of days ago and it was completely unexpected. This will be the first release of 2022. Hopefully it will be January, February, not any later than that. We want to get off to a good start, please, Blaze, um, in 2022. And it will be available for pre-order in November. Now this is a completely new company to me. Never heard of them. Um, so apparently none of the games were actually released in Europe. So Renovation Collection was... 16-bit games that were from Japanese publisher Telenet uh, and its US subsidiary Renovation which was released in North America um, and they were released in different formats from PC Engine to Turbo Graphics, MSX and Mega Drive, some on Super Nintendo but I believe most of the versions here are most likely going to be the Mega Drive versions that were released in North America um, and there are a good selection of games here. I'll give you my opinion on all of them very soon. Um, but there's a mixed bag. There's a lot of really interesting titles here. Um, there's 12 games on the list, all 16-bit games, and all most likely going to be Mega Drive. So without further ado, let's get started and let's get stuck into the first game. Okay, guys, first game on the list is Arcus Odyssey. Now, I'd say a lot of these games are very... You can see Japanese style anime, sort of manga style graphics and videos, which is, I guess, what appeals to the Japanese audiences. And which is maybe one of the reasons why we didn't see a lot of these games um, released in Europe. Which is a little bit of a shame. There's some really good titles here. We've got the usual plot. Shall we fast forward? So we've got four characters to actually choose from. I have no idea what difference it's going to make. I'll go for the bog standard one. So this is a kind of a isometric style shooting RPG comp not so much an RPG game but I mean it has RPG elements but it's more or less like a, a scrolling shoot em up almost and it, it, you can tell the sound effects graphically it's very much Mega Drive or Genesis whatever region you come from I mean this game's actually okay now one of my biggest issues I have with this game and maybe a couple other games on this collection, which I'll go into when we play them, is the control method. The generally it's okay, and this is obviously how it was designed, but playing in a D-pad in an isometric style is an absolute nightmare. This game itself is actually quite difficult. So you need to really take your time and watch your health bar on the bottom left there. You have got magic points you can use, but generally at the moment you've got different types of magic. Um, generally at the moment all you've got is off this firepower so you definitely need to be careful you don't take too many hits or you'll be back to the, the very beginning again which can be massively frustrating but yeah I reckon it would be good to be able to play this on a, a, a analog stick which if you if we're getting the VES um, you will be able to pull a connect maybe an 8-bit do a controller and use the analog uh, sorry the analog stick on that which I think is a must. Playing it the, this style is when a D-pad is an absolute pain. It really can be awkward. I and mean, I guess that's how it was designed, but it, it definitely plays better um, with an analog stick, which I have played um, with, and it definitely improves the gameplay. So playing this maybe in the handheld or even using the D-pad in the arcade VS, ah, I don't know. I'm not sure how that will work. 
I think it's actually quite a good game though. Kind of feels like a dungeon crawler right now. Ooh, didn't see that coming. I can see it is quite tricky. You really need to be careful what you're doing. Oh good, we've got some regeneration. Oh, which if you go into the option, you've got options here. I guess you can sort of choose. You get different magic powers. And Gruffly is probably quite basic, even I guess for a Mega Drive game this is probably quite basic. You can see maybe the background is coming from the PC Engine sources. Or Turbo Graphics. I'm not necessarily sure these were released on Turbo Graphics uh, in North America, but definitely on the Mega Drive they were. But in Japan there was probably PC Engine versions of a lot of these games. And this game isn't too bad, as you can see it is quite tricky. See I've only got one health bar here, so another hit and I'm, I'm toast. And sometimes the enemies do jump from off screen, you can't actually see them and before you realise it's too late. Oh, the doll of life. <laughs> what does that mean? Yes! I have no idea what that means though. So can I reach the dead end here, I need to go back. I can see definitely playing this game a little bit more and um, enjoying it. It's actually quite good. I don't really know what some of that means though. Lamp of Life and Doll of Life. A bit strange terminologies to me. I have died. Oh, Doll of Life, okay. I think I'm going to realise that's our regeneration. <laughs> okay. Quite cool. Yeah, I think playing through like that and playing and taking lots of hits is probably not the best way to play it. It's got a, a really good uh, soundtrack going on, really cool. I love it. I think it's going to be quite easy to get completely lost here and die or plenty. But yeah, it's not a bad start to be honest, it's pretty good. I think my only reservations really is the, the sort of control method with the D-pad, but it ain't bad at all. Okay guys, next on the list is Beast Wrestler. Now in Japan this was known as Beast Warriors I believe, um, and it's obviously the name has been changed for the American market to Beast Wrestler, which I can see why, once you play it you realise there's a lot of wrestling sort of moves in it. Um, but trying to do some of these moves is pretty impossible. You've got a few characters to choose from. Well, let's have a look at it. Beast Wrestler. Okay, another game. Definitely never played this. So you've got two options here. Match or tournament. I think for video purposes we'll just choose a quick match. Yeah, one P. So you can play a two-player game with this as well. Um, but for the purposes of the video, we're playing versus the computer. And what the heck did that say? Air ho ho. What? <laughs> Air holy. So select the monster. We've got a few to choose from. Look very different, um, but I think I'm not sure what we're going to choose here. Oh, that's a robot. Let's go with this guy, Makara. He looks like a Cyclops beast dude with a tail that's got a snake on it. Interesting. Let's do this guy. So you can actually choose who you can fight as well, but I'm not really sure if that makes any difference or what one's what. Looks like a blob. Okay, let's try this dude. Yeah. Hmm. So it would be nice to see some of those stats while you were choosing the actual beast, wouldn't it? Okay. Well, graphically actually looks okay. It sounds fine. So you've got some basic moves, you've got a punch move. And 
all like you got a sort of grappling style and then, then you can actually once you're doing the grappling I guess that's the wrestling aspect of it. Whack the button and see who wins out top. And you can actually ro oh give me a chokehold. I find that the moves feel very basic and it does get rather boring and repetitive. And I'll be honest, I don't know what some of the, the moves are. There's really two buttons to choose from. There's a punch and this sort of tail swipe thing. And then when you lock up, you sort of really whack the button and see what comes out on top. So you then you run to the ropes and you can do a sort of run and drop kick thing. Seems a little bit hit and miss, so to speak. And it's not really clear looking at it what your health bar is. I guess the health bars are at the left these three lights. I don't know what the A stands for. But I guess it's going to be the first one to run out of energy that's going to win here. Or uh, going to lose, sorry. Definitely a bit of a button basher. Which I guess is that's what wrestling games tend to be like a little. But you don't, you, I mean, you don't really seem to have a lot of moves at your disposal. I'm not really sure how some of these moves work. It seems a little random at times. get boring. I mean, I have to admit this one is pretty boring and dull to play. I honestly can't see me playing this one more than once. Pretty, pretty poor. Kind of interesting why you would want to include this in the collection. And partly, there is a lot of other um, renovation Telenet games out there, so it's most likely we will see a second collection. But you definitely wonder, this one's a bit of a stinker to be honest. I've no idea what the, that thing's doing. <laughs> it feels like I'm pressing buttons and nothing's actually happening. I feel I'm totally transfixed. Okay, here I'm doing a run. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, I feel as if I'm going to be toast here. Oh, here I go in a run again. To the ropes, the electrified ropes that are invisible. I'm drop kicking nobody. Oh look, I've obviously now got a red dot in my um, health bar. I guess that's not good. I guess it's the first person to run completely out. Now, I'm at the point. Oh, see, there's, there does seem to be a, a variety of moves and drop kicks and suplexes and stuff, but it doesn't seem completely clear to me how to actually pull the moves off. It seems completely random where your character's faced. And it feels like I'm bashing the buttons here and it's making zero difference. I mean, it's a very, very crude wrestling game, that's for sure. My character's just lying there, I think I'm nearly done. There's not even a run option that, that I can see. You seem to run randomly when you're in the grapple. I don't really get that at all. My character's definitely on his last legs. Oh, he's done. We've got three red bars, that's not good. Oh no. I think I'm defeated. Yep. No, not, never even made a dent in the, the opponent's health bar. Bizarre. Well, that's horrible. I'm sorry, Blaze. That is absolutely horrible. Next game, please. Okay, next game is Dino Land, which is a pinball game. Interesting, I think Blaze seem to like their pinball games for some reason. Always seem to be including a few. We've got a few now on um, Evercade. Interesting. Let's have a look, see how good this one is. You can actually play this two player game as well, interestingly. <laughs> well, the sound effects kind of make, makes me sound. Let's play Dizzy! So oh, it's a nice bog standard pinball game. It plays quite well. I guess we'll just need to hit as much things as possible and light up all the lights. And not let the ball drop. Let's play Dizzy! <laughs> Sorry. So I'm not really a massive fan of pinball games, but this isn't even, this isn't bad at all. Pretty good. Controls well enough. Definitely reminds me a little bit, I guess, like Alien Crush on the, the Turbo Graphics PC engine. 
I mean, not quite as good, but it's, it's alright. Not bad at all. Controls well enough. I think this probably could work quite well on the handheld. Oh, oh no. I mean, I definitely, there are uh, pinball fans out there. So it definitely has its market. Um, so folks that love that will absolutely love this, I'm sure. This is pretty good. It does get a little bit uh, repetitive, I guess. But it, de uh, it definitely adds variety to the collection. I think most of them are sort of shoot em ups, RPGs. So uh, an added sort of pinball game um, is definitely welcome. Sometimes not really exactly sure what you're really doing, you're just really trying to keep the ball alive, aren't you? Keep it going. See, Dino Land's nearly lit up. Oh, that was lucky. Got one letter to light up, that must be a good thing. Come on. Yeah, this is looking good. <laughs> ah, come on. Excellent. At least they are pretty easy to play, you've only just got a few buttons. Extremely simple. Oh, we're on the boss. Oh my god! <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that, was I? Or that. It's doing so well. Okay, let's do it. But yeah, I definitely like this. It's, it's not bad at all. Oh darn. Game over. Well, not bad at all, folks. Let's move on to the next game. So, next game on the list is El Viento, which is a powerful tornado. Guess that we need to stop. This game's quite interesting. It's a kind of a, I don't know best to describe it, kind of a Castlevania come Shinobi come Shadow Warriors still platform game and it looks like, I don't know what, it's like Dick Tracy characters or something, <laughs> private eyes that you're taking down. So it's a very strange mix of games. You've got a few buttons, options, you've got a magic button here which is this fire, just hold it down and it unleashes that and then you've got this kind of looks like a boomerang almost shit and then you've got your jump button. It controls really well. I'd say this is might be one of my most favourite games on the cart. And graphically I thought the, the style the graphics are a little bit greeny and brown on especially on this level. Um which kinda makes things a little bit more difficult to see. But uh, I think the most important part of the gameplay wise it's plays really well, very responsive. And it's quite good fun to play. Oh, these guys are hiding. I really need to be careful with my hit points here. But this one is very, very good. Very, it's fun. Great little soundtrack going too. Oh, I died already. Definitely really like this game. I think this will definitely play really well on the handheld and the VS. It's an interesting mix of sort of styles. So you, you can jump higher the longer you hold down the jump button. I don't really know why there's so many people chucking things out the window. <laughs> All the same character too. Oh damn. But yeah, definitely I do like myself a platformer. There's a little bit of shit involved here. I'm not really sure what the Dick Tracy style characters are all about, shouldn't you? It's 
So our soundtrack's definitely got a lot, a great little beat to it. Oh. <laughs> Much needed to tell. <laughs> Why is there so many guys chucking things out of the window? I don't know. No. Now, a little tip here is, which I never really realised, that this brown double thing here is actually a door. If you push up, you go through. I've done a lot of aimless wandering about to realise that's what it was. Couldn't make any progress till I realised that. Oops. So a lot of frustrating jumping elements. Finally. As you see, the graphics so far are all very greeny, browny. <laughs> the style is very, very strange, isn't it? But it, but it looks really nice. I have to say, it's actually quite, uh, quite good fun to play. I really need some, some uh, energy though. Good, pretty tough though, but it's that's pretty good. I definitely like that one. A little bit more care and attention required from me there. So next game on the list is Exile, which is an RPG game. Interestingly, there are other games called Exile, which I played on the C64. But it's a massively different game. It's not an RPG either. Now this one has uh, different styles, so you start off, you've got this top-down RPG standard uh, view. And then when you sort of move to some of the other locations, you get moved to a, a, a scrolling sort of shooter beat -em up game, which is quite interestingly done. And you've got some characters here that you need to sort of join up into your party. And we've got a few different options, um, if you press the button things to do, weapons, magic, usual malarkey, and there's also a save option in here, funny enough. Which I think when you play through the game it is definitely required. It does get quite tricky. <laughs> so a lot of the characters don't really want to speak to you, but you just walk into them and, you, and most of them you do speak. So the usual you really need to do a little bit of wandering about, figure out what you need to do. Um, in this section it's actually about trying to get the characters to join up with you. So really we're in a sort of little village, you've got shops, you can buy different things, that kind of thing. The usual sort of RPG things, shops, inns to sleep in, well, at the moment this guy sort of stops you from leaving because the, the sun is shining, <laughs> whatever that means. Just wandering about and then collect the characters, buy some stuff that you might need, might need some whatever the heck that says. <laughs> but I've definitely found the controls are a little bit strange, they don't seem to be the most responsive. It feels as like if I'm pressing and nothing's happening. Sometimes you know, the, the character conversations don't seem to kick in automatically. And sometimes they do, just like that. I just walked into them and it starts a conversation. Very strange. Oh, there it goes again. So 
someone's meant someone's went missing, we need to discover them. Oh darn. So I need to investigate the suspicious man whom my daddy saw, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, that's what we're doing. Totally. Do we have a choice? Again, another great little tune going on. Okay, we go, we've got a character going to join us in our quest. No, no, no. So now we've got a character. And we're doing the conga. Everyone do the conga. Do, do, do. Oh, we've got another character. Yay, we've now got four of us. We've got a decent conga going now. Do, 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 all across the land. Okay, I think we can escape here now. The sky's getting more and more overcast. Now it'll be safe to go out. Alright, it must be too too hot to go out, but now it's fine. That makes sense. So we've got two different areas to choose from. Okay, this is where we were, Junesville. And now we've got the des desert. Desert. All our characters following us. See, sometimes the, the, the movement seems a little bit strange with the characters are pressing one way and it's going another. What's a mirage? Oh. So, this is where the, the gameplay element change a little bit, and then suddenly we have got a side scroll and slash them up. That's pretty tricky though, but it's fun. This is cool. definitely quite enjoyable. Pleasant surprise when I was playing, for sure. Got a jump button and slash. Coming off, so you got uh, access to your magic weapons, statuses, and stuff, and tonics. So, yeah, for energy. It does get very tricky. Got a lot of sort of dragonflies by the looks of it. Flying past, so you need to be very mindful of your health. Oh, just like that, they peer out of nowhere. One of my pet hates of. Monsters appearing out of nowhere and hitting you before you have a chance. Like that. Totally unfair. I hate that style. And again? What the heck? I'm gonna die here, aren't I? God, this thing. Nope. Like I said, there, look, this is pretty hard. And that's game over already. So, I'm not really sure. I think if you've got the patience then you'll probably enjoy that, but it's pretty tricky. It looks like it's got some promise, so hopefully um, I'll get more time with that and, and see if it improves any, but it is very hard. It is quite cool to have those different elements of uh, side-scrolling, sort of slash them up, but if it's pretty difficult it's going to add a lot of frustration. So next game on the list is Final Zone. Now this is definitely a very different game to some of the games we've played so far. And you play a sort of a robot mech and you need to take out all the enemies so you've got these are all the target enemies we need to destroy on the map. And it sort of gives you a tally of the ones you've still to do. And one of the issues I have with this game is the isometric style again is a bit of a pain. For shooting purposes, it's you really need to stop shooting so you can change sort of direction, which is really annoying. And again, I think playing this as a D-pad is frustrating. I think you really need an analog stick to be able to play these games properly. But strangely, this is probably how these were designed with a D-pad in mind. But I just think it doesn't work as well. But yeah, even in saying that, this is actually really good fun. It's a really good game. Um, a little bit of aimless wandering right enough till you find the actual enemies. I guess I'm really just going about shooting everything. I'm down to 12 now. My health bar is horribly low. But this is pretty good. This is a pretty decent game and it's, it's very playable. I didn't really start that uh, particular game very well. Down to 8 enemies. So, show you the options. 
So you get any of the options, you can actually mess about and change the different sort of style of weapons that you've got. And then go back in. So let's see what this does. Gives you different sort of shooting styles and options, which I guess is quite cool. But it all comes down to it, you really just want to just shoot everything in sight. Well, that's the energy, I think. But yeah, the control method is a little bit strange. You can't actually change the direction um, of your shooting until you actually stop shooting. So let's see, so let's see I'm sort of holding down the shoot button, I can't change the direction, I can just keep moving. So I need to actually stop shooting and then choose a direction so that I can shoot. It's kind of, a, kind of annoying. So that doesn't help, so that's not great. Definitely think it definitely could be doing a little bit of tidying up the, the control methods. That's quite good fun to play, I guess. I think what would be quite helpful would be a, an actual map. There is a sort of map in the middle of the screen there, but I'm, I have no idea what it's referring to. Just really need to kill those yep, the helicopter. 33 enemies. Oh, there's another one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Go on, go on, go on, go on. One of the better games in the collection. Oh, I've got one enemy to kill here. Ah, it's so difficult to choose a, a, a direction. Ah, it's going around me. I'm going to die first, aren't I? Yay! Oh, that's been end the level, guy. That's my chances there when I've only got one health bar. <laughs> well, this is actually quite good fun to play. I just wish the sort of control method was a little bit sort of more user friendly. But it still is quite good fun. That's not bad at all. Pretty good. I guess second level is going to be more of the same. Slightly different location. Yeah. Definitely see me playing this one more and more. I just uh, wish the controls were a little bit better. I think um, not playing with a D-pad would be better. Playing with a digital stick would be much... Okay guys, let's move on to this next game. You guys, next on the list is Gaiares, which is a uh, shoot 'em up. Yep, unfortunately, this isn't my favourite style of game at all. But I'm not going to dismiss it just because of that. Let's get stuck into it and let's see what it's like. I think graphically it's not too bad. Got this sort of little additional part here, which can <laughs> attach the enemies and sort of destroy them for you. I find that just holding down the button rather than constantly pressing the button seems to be a better option. We've got power em ups here as well. There's also an option to choose, see at the top, get mid and change it to max. And man, I don't really know what that means to be honest with you. 
Oh, it's obviously where this uh, sort of additional part of the ship is located, I guess. Anyway, let's try and survive as long as possible here. Done well. See, one of the things why I don't like these type of games is I'm absolutely terrible at them. <laughs> I'd love to love them, but um, a lot of them I'm just I find it too difficult to play. But this is it's okay. It's got a great little sort of soundtrack going on. Something really the trick is just to avoid the, the enemy fire, really. Okay, easier said than done. Oh, cool, this is nice. Oh, <laughs> I actually moved into that. Uh, so, one of the most frustrating parts of this is if you die at any point, you're really sent right straight back to the beginning, which is another pet hate for me in games. Um. I guess some people don't mind, but I mean, if you die, you, it's a computer game, don't make it that hard. Let me start off from where I finished. So it seems to be if you choose the minimum max uh, and minimum how fast you can move your ship as well. I guess you want to keep it um, at the minimum. Max seems to be moving too quickly. Quite cool you can actually scroll up and down the screen here, quite far. Well, it just seems that you're scrolling up far, but you're not really, but... It certainly adds a little bit of depth to this sort of level. Which is quite nice. Oh. I do really need to pay attention. Now this is the most frustrating part of this is going all the way back to the start playing through this. And one of the reasons why I generally don't survive or last long enough playing some of these games which is frustrating to me. But this seems okay. I mean I'm not going to diss it at all because this has seemed pretty good for yeah, I show them up, and a lot of people will really, really enjoy this this type of game. Um, I'm just not particularly good at it. So let's move on to the next game. Okay, next game, guys, is Granada, which is kind of like another sort of mech robot shooting game, a little bit like um, the Final Zone that we were playing. A little bit similar. So this game you can actually see there's a radar in the bottom right where you've got all the reds that are part where you've got all the enemies. You need to clear the level of all the red sort of dots and enemies. Easier said than done. And the style of this game and the looking at the radar actually reminds me of Rally X for some reason. Obviously it doesn't play like that, but just the way the, the sort of radar goes which reminds me of Rally X. We need to find out all these red dots and destroy them. We've got plenty of firepower, we've got this uh, extra powerful sort of missile laser beam thing. This game is actually quite fun, I can see me definitely play this one quite a lot. You can see my shield is almost done though from the top. And again, this is one of these games that I really think would benefit massively um, from a, an analog stick rather than playing with a D-pad. But it, it plays okay with the D-pad, I just think it's going to benefit massively from having an analog stick. Which you'll probably be able to do uh, on the VS using a neat bit to a controller. I think you would definitely get more enjoyment out of some of these games. to get into the top bit here. We've got some enemies. This is quite good fun. Again, there's another decent sort of soundtrack um, sort of going on in the background, which is quite common theme in a lot of these uh, Telenet renovation games. Try to avoid this. Nice added style here. I, I like it. Go on the other end, don't I? Yep. Definitely controls a little bit better than some of the other games. 
Oh, I'm going to destroy these things before they get overrun. It's not too difficult, I guess. Which is pleasing for me, I don't like games that are too difficult. Kind of defeats the purpose for me. Like games that are fun. <laughs> oh, I'm running out of energy here. Oh, that was a warning, I think I'm running out of health. Okay. This is definitely, definitely one of the better games on the, the collection here. Very enjoyable. I, oh, I can definitely see me playing this one quite a lot. Need to pay attention now. Ah! Wow. Oh, wow, I died already. Oh, I was so close to the finish too. That's pretty good, I did enjoy that. Definitely one of the better games on the collection. Okay, now we are on to Soldis. Now, I have actually played the Mega CD equivalent, which was released in the UK, called Solfis. As far as I can tell, it's more or less the same game. Solfis um, had additional sort of anime style introduction, obviously due to the, the fact it was on CD, they, could, they generally added a lot of FMV so anime style, and it was pretty cheesy, it wasn't amazing, but it, it was, at the time it was probably quite good. Um, but apart from that I don't think there was a lot, an awful lot of differences to the game, the shoot map part was practically the same. Um, and let's have a look at it. Now this one I definitely prefer to the other shoot them up on, on uh, the list. It seems certainly a lot more responsive and more playable, but kind of similar. I don't think this one is quite as difficult. Still not very good at it though, to be fair. <laughs> Again, I'm exceptionally bad at these type of games. So I apologise to anybody watching. I have got a little bit further in Soul Piece, but geez, oh, I was really never good at these games at all. But if you're a shoot em up fan, I think you'll really enjoy this one. Um, it is pretty good for what it is, and it's a shoot em up. Not for me though, I hate shoot em ups. But these are pretty decent ones that are on the collection, so I'm not going to diss any of them. Okay, next game is Teresia. Which, guess, you could probably guess this is an RPG of sorts. Okay, bored already. <laughs> Let's move on to the game, folks. So, you can see you start off with the usual. You start off in a village, aimless wandering about till you figure out what the heck to do. So, you play a character called Roy. And at the moment, there's really not an awful lot of options, I guess. There's going to be more characters going to join um, up. Again, I feel that this 
the character response with the D-pad is just bloody awful. I feel there's a bit of glitching here and there as well with the, the sort of graphical styles. So what we got? We've got some options here. I feel that the character response on this is just terrible. You can't really run or anything. At times I just feel as if the characters are still moving after they're pressed. You can talk to the characters but it's just not really offering much so far. There is an action button but sometimes it just seems completely unresponsive as well. Trying to talk to people and read things and absolutely nothing's happening. And the soundtrack's fair enough. But also it's not massively clear where you're supposed to go or what you're supposed to actually do. I guess a lot of RPGs do have similar elements where you're sort of a aimlessly wandering about till you just figure out where you're supposed to go and what you're supposed to do. But this is probably one of the worst examples of that. I just feel the, the, the graphic and the motion here is quite jerky. Okay, I really don't have good first impressions of this game at all. A lot of aimless wandering about. Not really clear where it's supposed to go. So early doors, it's really not clear what you're supposed to be doing. I guess I need to join up a clan or something for fighting purposes. Which I don't really think you should access to some of these places if you, you need to do something specific. There's a lot of area here to discover, but there's nothing really here. It's all completely empty and blank areas. Got a path to follow and there's nothing there. <laughs> I mean, what the... I think, just on my first impression here, that this is extremely poor. So there's other RPGs on this uh, collection and they're much better than this. I'm not sure what the point is out here. There are just lots of dead ends and stuff, what's the point in that? It's just really silly. Okay, I think I'm going to have to stumble accidentally on something where I'm supposed to go and what I'm supposed to do. Is it a weapon shop? Yeah, let me buy a massive sword. Yep, I need one, but of course I do. Okay, who's this guy? Can I talk to him? Have you heard about our master? Oh, where the hell has he? Playhouse? <laughs> what does that mean? Welcome! What? Oh dear. There's lots of characters. I'm not really sure who I'm talking to, what I'm doing. Okay, this is this for something? Oh my goodness, this is just terrible. The, the controls are unresponsive. It's not clear what you're supposed to do. I mean, I don't really see me playing this at any length at all, even when I get the actual Evercade cart. Absolutely dreadful. As much as I want to try and figure out what I'm supposed to do and where I'm supposed to go, I mean, the, the controls are killing it for me. Look at the, the jerky sack scrolling is dreadful. I mean, yeah, I maybe need my hand held a little bit here and say, big arrow pointing this way, please. <laughs> what the heck, I'm stuck. 
character doesn't really move the way I want it to move either. I think this game's going to be a, a lot of aimless wandering about until you maybe accidentally discover what to do. You seem to be need to be in the right place to be able to talk to the characters. If you're not standing directly in front of them, they don't want to know. Yeah, I think we should move on, guys. This is not giving me a good experience at all. Okay, guys. Here we go. We've got Phallus, the Phantasm Soldier. The interesting was four Valus games. Now we've got two of them on the cart here, Valus 1 and Valus 3. Um, I'm not sure why the other two games are not included and why we jumped to Valus 2. There was a Valus 2 on the Mega Drive, it was called SD Valus, or Valus of Sid I think it was called, something like that. Um, and the style is massively different to this version, and 3. Um, it's a lot harder too, but it moves quicker, so I'm not really sure why it wasn't here. Phallus 4 was released on Super Nintendo. Um, again, I'm not really sure why that's not on the collection. Uh, that was pretty good, but it is quite similar to number 3. But um, let's get stuck in, let's have a look at this Phallus one. So, kind of a player schoolgirl, a Japanese one, I guess, and you have a few different controls to your disposal. You your standard jump button. And you've got this slidey action and you've got a kind of a sword that you can use and you can also get power up to make it more effective as you go through the level. Oh. So at the moment it's really the quite weak the sword, but when you get power ups it definitely helps. You feel a lot uh, sort of stronger. Here we go, this is probably one of the first power ups. And it does help. magic power that one so you got magic as well you can actually jump higher if you press up you see the head moving there you can jump and it jumps a little bit higher than normal quite important to to know for some of the trickier to reach uh, locations um, and this is quite good fun to play I mean it's playable the only thing I don't like is this character running in treacle nonsense I don't know why the so I've got the character running so slowly. It makes the game quite torturous to play. I mean, look how quickly she jumps. Like, runs as if she's in treacle or something. It's almost laughable, to be honest, how slow she's running. I'm not really sure why they've designed it like that. Can't really say it's limitations of the, the hardware, surely. Sometimes your character is moving too fast, it makes the game quite difficult and you can't see the characters coming on the screen. I'm not sure. But it's probably the worst part of the game, because the, the actual game is quite fun to play. Again, it's got a really nice soundtrack going. Interestingly, there was a... a Valus X, but it was a, like a graphical novel that was released in Japan only. Um, but it was definitely questionable content. So it's certainly nothing we'll see on um, Evercade. But there was four games. Maybe we will see the other two games on a, a collection too. Because there are plenty of other um, sort of telenet and renovation games out there that could possibly make up a few more carts. But we'll see. It's definitely a good start. I mean, they're, they're not all amazing games on this cart, that's for sure. But I'm sure some of them will have their audiences. Some people will like some different types of games than others. Especially your shoot 'em ups and RPGs. I mean, I'm kind of uh, somewhere in the middle. The games are quite good. It's good to play some of these games I've never heard of or played before. And it certainly makes a refreshing change. I almost wish that the character would run by if you double clicked in the right stick or something, but no. 
just this constant slow walk thing. Pretty frustrating. Ah, this is better. Definitely helps him um, defeat the enemies quicker when you're powered up a little bit more. Ah, extra life, cool. Too far away to do anything here, runner. Ah! Ah! I hate when they sort of bounces and makes me shoot the wrong way. How annoying. Anyway guys, let's move on to Valus 3. Okay guys, last game on the collection is Valus 3. It's kind of similar to the first one, except it's, it's a graphically make a slightly superior. I think we start with a, a type of a, a dream sequence. Wake up! You can see the style is kinda similar. I'm still running in Trico, which I don't really get. And in pyjamas, cool. At least we've got rid of the school uniform. I can't use my sword yet because it's not there. I kind of feel as if um, we should be running a lot faster, especially with the music. It seems quite urgent. Oh, there's my sword. Goody goody. Oh look, she's running! Did you see that? She was running! She can run! <laughs> Don't get it. So the controls are pretty much exactly the same. I think interestingly in the Valus 4, the game style is pretty similar. Well, Valus 2 is massively different. And to be careful with these sort of jumping platforms things, you definitely need the extra long jump. And the extra high jump. We'll oh, need that. I think graphically this game probably looks better than the first one, but I'm not sure it's a better game though. It was a little bit trickier to play, there's all sort of these annoying sort of jumping sequences which you can die quite easily from. So sort of get enemies appear randomly just as you're about to jump, which is quite annoying. If you don't time these jumps right you're going to die. Bad games, I just wish they weren't constantly running in Trico. Definitely think this one's a little bit more frustrating. Oh, I guess I'm still doing this kind of dream sequence thing, maybe. Maybe wrong. Must be a dream sequence, that was far too easy. So 
guys, so far, I mean, I think some of the games are really good. Some of the games are really, really bad. So, a bit of a mixed bag. I did enjoy some of the games. And I think they'll definitely fare well on the, the handheld and DS. But there are a few games there that are absolutely stinkers, like Beast Wrestler. You know, I just don't get it at all. There's an RPG as well, but um, it's just plain terrible. But some of these games, these games are okay. They're, they're very playable. It's quite refreshing to get more games again that we've definitely not been released in Europe, and I've definitely not played a lot of these games. I'm sure some people may enjoy these games more than others, and I think that some people just as equally probably not like any of these games at all. Certainly a mixed bag, I mean, it's been interesting to play them and experience them, and I definitely look forward to it, but so I'm not quite as excited for this one as I am for a lot of other carps. But hopefully these games will get released, let's say, early so 2022. I would really like them to start off in the right stead by like releasing it in January, for example, and not like this year, the first release was in April, which was, for me, way, way, way too late. Um, but actually, hopefully we'll get some more releases um, of com upcoming games very soon. Um, guys, thanks very much for watching our video. Hopefully you liked and enjoy our sneak peek and look at all these games coming on the Renovation Collection 1. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, and we'll catch you again next time. Bye for now, folks.